Hello and welcome. Talking about types. So there is the bulk type, there's the slim type, there's the... No. <laughs> We're talking about different types. Yeah? We're talking about typing types inside of our logic of our programs. First of all, we're talking about a variable. Yeah? What is a variable? We do have memory, hopefully. Yeah? Not here, but also in our computers. Yeah? Hopefully you have also here a little bit of memory left to suck this thing in. Yeah? So there's a memory. Inside this memory, there are a lot of places where I could store something. Yeah? And a variable is some certain part of the memory which I can give a name. Yeah? And in my case, my variable is called variable. So variable is a named memory portion I can access with my program. And that's basically it. How much memory there is behind. Yeah? This depends a little bit on the programming language yeah? and also on the so-called type. Yeah? So if I do use a typed programming language, yeah? so there are typed programming language, yeah? I do not only give the variable a name, yeah? write your name. I also give it a type. That sounds logic, yeah? What is a type now? A type describes a little bit more in detail what I want, what I intend to store inside this variable. Yeah? So in type programming languages usually there is a data type for integer values. Yeah? There's a data type for floating point values. Yeah? There's a data type which can hold uh, characters, string values, yeah? character strings. This is a typed language. Yeah? If you're using a typed language like C++ or Java, I have to name a type for a variable. But there are also typeless, typeless, Type less programming languages, for instance, JavaScript, uh, Prolog. I do not have to type it, there is no type. Usually, those typeless uh, programming languages they do store this as a character string, yeah? and every time I'm using in a type plus programming language, this variable, it might change its type. If I'm assigning a, a new value to this variable, it might change the type. So both things do have their certain advantages and disadvantages. Why we're using typed languages? Usually we're using typed languages because we can check if the correct thing is really written in, or if the correct thing, I try to operate with a variable something, yeah, and we can check if this is allowed with this data type, yeah? or not. I'm not allowed to, to, to do calculations, multiplications, or whatever with a string type, yeah? for instance. So, uh, this type language can do a little bit more checking yeah, with the typeless. Other errors are possible. But however, here I really have to take care that if I do want to change the type of a variable, if I do want to interpret this as another thing, yeah, for instance, if I print out a variable uh, with an integer value, the integer value is 128. I do not want to print the sign or the character 128. I do want to print three characters, one, two, eight. Yeah. 
this is there must be somehow a type conversion yeah, that we interpret this now as string and so on. In typeless, this is done pretty much automatically. Yeah. In type things, I maybe have to take care about these things. Yeah. How to access the data. Usually, we are going to use typed. Yeah. We are going to use typed programming languages because these type systems, what what do those type systems do? Yeah. Type system. Usually you do have the possibility to use primitive types. Yeah. So there's built-in types, primitive data types. These are natively understood by the programming language. Yeah? And by combining such primitive data types to a complex data type, yeah? we can produce our new data types, like so-called complex. Data types are possible yeah, in a type system, usually. Yeah? Also in a type system, it's possible to name a variable typed. Yeah? Variables with time name and type. But not only, only variables, but also for instance functions yeah? can name a type. Yeah? There are also rules yeah, what what things are possible in a certain for a certain data type. Yeah? So uh, rules of expression, yeah, rules rules of expression and processing. They're different from data type to data type. Yeah? What I am allowed to do with this data type. It's also part of the type system. Uh, and then there might be things like I have to find out what what type this is. Yeah. So, so uh, type information. This might also be. That there are certain programming commands where I can get the type of a variable. Hey, what, what, did, what is this for a type? Huh? What's this? Hmm? Instance of or something like this. Huh? Might sometimes be necessary when you're working with pointer. Huh? We already talked about a pointer. The variable is the name yeah, is this portion of the of the memory? Yeah? And there is a pointer. Pointer to variable. Which is only holding the address of the variable. Yeah? And here it's also nice to have a type system because the pointer can it has then the uh, type pointer of integer pointer of floating point pointer of whatever and we know how many bytes are inside there okay so this is the pointer to the variable which is usually pointing at the first byte where this variable is using the memory okay? and sometimes if we have a pointer which can point to different type of variables, yeah, this type information might be necessary, okay? Especially if there are objects, this instance of whatever. Yeah, so this is a type system. Yeah? Type system, those things are delivered. Yeah? If the type system is can be checked yeah, during compile, compile time, yeah, then this, uh, 
This is aesthetic typing. Yeah? If the types, types are only checked during uh, runtime, it's a dynamic typing. Yeah? That's it. That's type system. Now we're ready. Yeah? Now we're ready to dig in a little bit deeper and start our programming. Yeah? We're going to start our pro programming with object-oriented program. Yeah? We will now, in the next videos, we will dig a little bit more deeper in what is object-oriented, what we have to do about this, and then we start with C++ and Arduino again. Yeah? This will be then the next videos. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.